Good morning, everybody. Jan of Jan Hicks Creates here. Working on a little stitch with me for you today. How's everybody doing today? It is Friday, February 14th at 9 a.m. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone, for those who celebrate. 75 degrees, partly cloudy, going up to 78. It's going to be warmer than that. It's a bright, sunny day here. The cloudiness has pretty much all gone away. Still a nice wind blowing, but it's going to be a warm day today. We may actually have to put the air conditioning on today. We shall see. So, let's talk about what you see in front of you. Oh, my goodness. Um, I am supposed to be working on the Time for Seasons stitch along. I really had every intention last night of working on the Time for Seasons stitch along. But yesterday afternoon, I started playing with fabric and the oxide colorway from Mrs. Sadus. Seeing which would work best. And I came across this piece of, this is gray sand, um, one of Judith Exju Designs fabrics in my stash. And um, it just seemed too perfect. And I couldn't resist the urge to give it a try, put floss to fabric and see how it looked. And yeah, it's as gorgeous as gorgeous as I expected. So what I am stitching is my new design, Narnia. It is not ready for publication yet, it is not finished, but I'm stitching the parts that are. This is, I'm gonna publish it before I get it finished stitching because it will take too long. It's 252 by 201 stitches, so it's not huge, but it's not small either. But anyways, the side band is this kind of leafy band, and that's what I am working on. So, oh my goodness, like I said, 36 count, one strand of, um, one strand of the silk over two of the linen threads. I am using the sewing method, stitching in hand, which is my preferred way, and in my opinion, is much faster. So I am color controlling this a bit. It's not the easiest thread to color control because there is such a blending of colors in it, but there are sections that are more orange and sections that are more of the mixed colors. So I have put them on. This is one of my thread keepers from um, That So Kelly Co. So I cut up thread like I showed you in my video on silks, and I have on this side the one that's more of a mix, although you can see that there are some cuts that have more of the orange gold in it. But for the most part, this is more of the mixed side, and this is more of the side that has the strong oranges and golds. So the my my colors for this pattern it's only two colors it's navy and let's see it's actually cornflower blue very dark 791 and then the the yellow the gold is 783 that's what i've charted it as so i'm using this for the navy and this for the topaz for the gold and this is what it's looking like so you can see there is much more of the orange gold here than here. But I, let me tell you, this, this is like the perfect floss for someone like me. I've mentioned in my videos that I love the grungy, messy, sprayed look, you know, yarn when you're talking about yarn i love the speckles i love the way that different colors can flow into each other when dying and raquel has hit 
this colorway out of the ballpark. I don't know whether you can even see all the subtle changes in the colors, but I mean, we go from golds, the gold blends into the blue, and so you get some greens, you get aqua, and then you get the darker blue. I mean, it's just, it's a joy to stitch with. And even when you're talking about the side with all the more of the oranges, there is some of the subtle shading into more brownish, greenish tonals, the lighter golds going into the stronger, almost orange. I mean, it's, yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. And of course, because it is Mississauga silk, it is lovely to stitch with as well. So yeah, I was supposed to be working on the the autumn scene, the first part of the autumn scene for the time of time for season sal. Now I knew I wasn't going to get it done. Um, let me see where am I? There I am. Um, before the second part of the autumn autumn scene was released, it was supposed to come out on the fifteenth. She actually sent it out today because um, she's going to have a busy weekend. So, yeah. <laughs> I would have been further along, but I'm not. I'm only working on this. I worked on it last night. I'll work on it, you know, for this stitch with me. And then I will put it away until I get the design finished. Um, get on camera, Jen. Be, until I get the design finished and then I'll start picking it up again to promote the pattern. Oop, get back here. So, yeah, just gorgeous. And of course, this is, like I said, this pattern, it's charted in two colors. You could use any two colors. You could use one color. Um, I think this is going to be a very versatile piece. So, you guys doing anything special for Valentine's Day? Mike and I, I don't really celebrate it um, as a special holiday. You know, we don't need a special day to celebrate our love, basically. And we don't need to be, you know, it's funny because my older son, Samuel, he's very much a minimalist in every way. Um, he also is very, he has very clarifying thoughts. I keep going off camera. I'm sorry. Um, fabric is kind of pulling. He, and he would argue with us. He would have a, a thought or a belief and he would argue us. We always said that he should have been a lawyer because he would argue with us up and down, right and left. And, you know, good arguments. And some of them were valid and some of them were like, no, this is, some of them were, you know, him wanting to do stuff and it would be like, no, this is what we're doing and that's it. Um, but one of the things, after he got into college, actually, one of the things that he would talk to us about is how commercialized holidays were and how stupid, quite frankly, Valentine's Day was. Because it was, it was really just created to sell stuff, sell candy, sell cards. Now this, this is his, him talking. And who needs a special day? You know, why should you just have one day to celebrate love? Shouldn't we be celebrating love all the time? And Mike and I basically adopted that as our thinking. I mean, we before that we would get cards. We went away for Valentine's Day a couple of times. Um, it's not like we went overboard anyway, but anyway, it's just, it's not a big deal around here. And I am perfectly okay with that. We are gonna go up to the North Shore, um, up to one, our favorite burger joint up there and they have gluten-free fries, so I can actually have some French fries with my burger. No bun on my burger, but that's okay. I compensate with a few fries and then watch the sunset. So that will be nice. 
Mike has had a few stressful days. We did find out a little bit more about the move and none of it was good, mo good news. Apparently that last signature that we needed was actually done on January 17th and the paperwork has just been sitting in HR, not doing anything, <laughs> just sitting there. Mike got his, um, his boss involved and his boss called the chief of HR and the chief of HR went down and talked to whoever he needed to talk to and found out all of this. I don't remember now if the HR department here has to do anything, but then it gets sent back to the HR office back at headquarters at Fort Meade in Maryland. And Mike found out yesterday that after all of this, they could deny his PCS. Basically, the paperwork was to um, curtail here because we're supposed to be here for three years. They curtail people all the time. So it's very unlikely that they would they would deny it. But, and, and especially because both the losing organization and the gaining organization, that's what all these signatures were for, to say, yes, we agree to this. So it's very unlikely that they would deny it, but Mike had to write up this huge justification for why he should curtail. And he had to do that yesterday. And it's like, we've gone through this whole process and nobody has said a word about it up until this point that, that he needed a justification that HR could deny, could turn down as his request. So he said to me when he came home that he was actually thinking about not telling me about this um, because he knew that I would go ballistic but he was actually more ballistic than I than I was. Frustrated, yes. Ballistic, no. They're just, you know, when you've worked with the government as long as we have, you just kind of start shaking your head at all the stupidity that happens. So anyway, I don't know whether he'll have any more news. He hasn't been sleeping well. He actually went to a dermatologist yesterday because he had several questionable, questionable spots on his body um, that we wanted to have checked out. And also he's been getting a bad rash on his hands in here and in here. And we thought it was related to, you know, soap or something. But it, it, it had gotten so bad in the past month that, I mean, just like, his whole palm, like fing bottom of his fingers on both hands were just torn up. So um, made an appointment to see the dermatologist. And the dermatologist said, have you been under much, much stress lately? And Mike's like, um, yeah, you could say that. And he's like, yep, that'll do it. This is all stress related. So very interesting. But it is a three-day weekend, so we're hoping that we can just get some relaxation in and maybe forget about things for a while. Like, that's going to happen. <laughs> All of our focus is on moving to San Antonio, but we can't do anything about it, so the frustration is real. We have been spending a lot of time in the evenings watching um, videos on YouTube of people overlanding in different places, overlanding in their Jeeps. And I think I've mentioned to you guys that that is something, you know, we hope to get the Jeep outfitted and um, to be able to go out to more remote areas that, that you can't take the RV to. Um, basically, it'd be rough camping, much rougher camping than I've ever done, especially compared to the RV. There's a, an outfit in Denver that where you can rent a Jeep that's fully tricked out with a, a rooftop tent and all the kitchen type stuff set up in it. So we're going to actually do that once it warms up in Denver um, to give it a try. 
because like I said, I've never rough camped. So I said, you know, before we put all this money into tricking out the Jeep, we've got to try it. I've got to see if I can, it's even something that I can tolerate. <laughs> but anyways, the, we've been watching a family, a Swedish family that has um, trekked all over Europe. But every year they do a trek um, through different mountains. And so last night we watched one of their episodes where they went through the Western Alps and then a second one where they went through the Pyrenees and then a third one where they were in the Carpathian Mountains. And just amazing. There's all these single lane sometimes no nothing more than just tracks through fields um through these mountains through the western alps just again it's one lane dirt road and sometimes your wheel is just like your your one wheel is just right on the edge where there's this huge drop <laughs> that would be like a i won't say it on here but <laughs> moment for me um but just, I mean, of course, the views are just amazing. And that's the thing we want to do. Just get out. And, of course, there's nobody else out there except, you know, the, the there's not even, like, in some of these places, any locals. You might, when you get down into the lower elevations, you get into some of the villages and you, there's, like, herds of goats and cows and Horses, horses standing on the road, and you have to wait till they get off the road before you can pass. I mean, I think that was in the Pyrenees. Oh my goodness. Just. So, yeah, I mean, we could spend, our plan is, if this works out, and once he retires, to get over to Europe and, I mean, just spend months in each area exploring all the little towns. You know, we want to see the big things too, but one of the things that Mike Mike and I really love here in this, whether it's here in the States or anywhere, is exploring small towns. And of course, in Europe, holy cow, and the history, the history of these places. Yeah. So we watch these and just dream of the time when we can get out and do that. We are so ready. I hope to get some sewing in this weekend since it is a, a long weekend with Mike home. I don't know what we're going to do. Kind of wish we had planned a trip to Maui for the long weekend, but we didn't. So, and my friends from, from Maryland are still here. So, um, we haven't really planned anything, but hopefully we'll get together with them again before they head back. Um, so yeah, we don't have anything planned. Um, I am not going to be doing a basics of cross stitch video on Monday. I just know with Mike here that it won't get it done or that I won't get it done. Um, I do hope to get some sewing done up there to spend like one day up in the loft with the sewing machine, getting some more pin cushions done and giving the project bags a whirl. You know, I went to, I mentioned in my floss tube video that I went to one of the local Goodwills to try and find um, you know, mounting stuff for my two designs. And one of the things I saw that I was there when I was there was these um, pillow shams for like just cushions for on your couch. They're just you know just small square pillow shams, but they were in some really fun materials, and they were like sets of two, sets of four, and I thought if I were more clever with the sewing machine. I could take those and make them into project bags. And I was so tempted to just go ahead and get them and to show you guys and say, okay, give me ideas. How do I do this? 
there must be a way to transform this into a project bag. But I, you know, at some point you have to restrain yourself, right? I know people are out there saying, really? I need to restrain myself? And you know, if you guys do know of a way, they were square, so I don't know whether, part of it was I didn't know whether it would be practical, whether you could get an end product in a size that would be useful, you know, if you sewed it together somehow. Um, but if you guys know of something like that or know of a, a YouTube video out there with a tutorial, I might go back and get a couple and give it a whirl. Or I might not because I haven't yet even tried to put together the projects bags with the fat quarters that I have or finish that needle roll that I have see that that's all those kind of things I really would like to get those done before that sewing machine gets packed up and moved out which since we don't really know when that is maybe that's not something to worry about <laughs> I don't know <laughs> oh my god all right where am I I have the digital pattern loaded in Knit Companion of course, so that's what I'm looking at now. Okay. Love, love, love. The fabric, the floss. Guys, if you don't have a skein of oxide yet, run and get it. I don't know how many she has left in her store. She can always die more. She, um, she showed a gorgeous deep red on Instagram. Somebody, I guess, had gotten in touch with her to request a special color, a deep red color. And so she showed it on Instagram, and of course, people were gaga over it. And she's like, oh, I don't know whether I'm going to put it in my store or not. I'm like, Raquel, <laughs> put it in your store. That's like a no-brainer. Make it part of your general line. So hopefully she will do that. She was, I, I believe she works full-time as well as running this dye business. So she's another woman that has a lot on her plate and does an amazing job with it. So let's see. So I know there are a lot of people that are starting the baby. It's cold outside. Um, stitch along today in honor of Leanne of Lost in Floss. I saw this morning that Beth Twist had um, designed a little, I guess, substitute for one of the trees in the bottom right of the chart next to the house, a little um, cardinal to put on the, to put on the design instead. I think cardinals were one of Leanne's favorites and apparently people put birds on things as kind of tokens of remembrance. So she did design a little cardinal to go on the charts. So if you, are taking part in that stitch along and would like to add that she did post it on Instagram I would assume it's on her blog too so I would look for that if I were you I am NOT taking part in that I do have that chart but I'm not taking part in that because it would just it would just stretch me too thin. I was actually going to do a new start today for Valentine's Day. I was gonna start on that arm cushion thing that I got, cover that I got. Um, again, another Beth Twist heartstring samplery design. Um, but instead I started this last night, so. <laughs> this, is, this is my Valentine's Day start. And it's rather appropriate includes many of my loves. My love of XU Design Fabric, my love of Mrs. Sadis Floss, 
and my newest love of designing. I was talking to Maria Kutzner the other day, and I said, you know, I've never been one afraid of change. Here I am, you know, that we were talking about Floss 2 videos and how it's a, not a, it's a great, not only is it like great to be part of the community, but it's a great way to keep track of your journey. And I said, yeah, after two years, I mean, if you had asked me even six months ago, if I would be designing this type of chart, my answer would, would have been, no way. <laughs> Here I am. Designing it, loving it. Really fit, fits in, though, well with my background in, like, the digital scrapbooking, graphic art type of world. You know, I'm so used to working on a computer. It's kind of fun to be back in that world, incorporating Photoshop and the cross-stitch tool and um, my love of cross-stitch. And then seeing a design that I've made come to life not only by me but by others as well just amazing now speaking of things I've designed I did design I did put up in my store the little um, Puerto Rico chart it's just a little thing the flag my idea was to have this kind of tattered flag look to represent the fact that Puerto Rico has been through so much in the last couple years and the words on it are, are Puerto Rico strong. Um, so yeah, it's nothing fancy. It's just a little thing. Um, the proceeds all will go to a charity called All Hearts and Hands, um, or All Hands and Hearts, maybe that's it. Um, it's to, to support and to um, help rebuild those who have lost homes and businesses in Puerto Rico. I'll put a link for that below. It is available in my shop now. All right, guys, I think that's about it for today. I'm about at a half hour. Gotta go and get my day started. Mike will probably be home early today. I think he had a meeting at 1030, but then I think he was gonna come home and collapse because once again, last night, he didn't get a good night's sleep. And it doesn't help that Nina, Nina has gotten really needy at night and usually about four o'clock in the morning, she decides I need somebody to pet me. It has been hours. And so she'll come up and start butting her head against you know various body parts between me and Mike. I just ignore her. <laughs> I will turn over or I will just not move. But Mike being the soft hearted guy that he is, He'll, he'll wake up and start petting her. And of course, that's just, just like a kid, <laughs> you know? If you give her the attention, she's going to think, oh, it's okay for every night at 4 o'clock in the morning for me to come and demand attention. I try and tell him. He doesn't listen. He is very soft-hearted. He's a sweetheart. And see, I'm going to end there talking about what a sweetheart my husband is on Valentine's Day and every day because he is and I appreciate him greatly and I appreciate you guys. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you are always out there spreading the love no matter what day it is. And I am sorry if I keep going off screen. I seem to have not have myself placed very well today. And maybe it's just that my hand is underneath where the time is showing on my screen, so maybe I am still on camera, but to me it looks like I'm off. But anyway, 
Forgive me for any flubs. Have a wonderful weekend and keep spreading that love and joy. I will talk to you again on Tuesday for my next Floss 2 video. Until then, I love you guys. Bye-bye.